What if uh, your family doctor was able to detect cancer in a few minutes from a single drop of blood? And this uh, before any tumor has even uh, formed. Detecting the disease at a much uh, earlier uh, stage would help uh, treating it in a more efficient and less uh, invasive way. Such a technology would also enable simple and frequent monitoring of the efficiency of treatments toward personal care fully adapted to each patient. Of course, all that will save more lives uh, while also reducing dramatically uh, sanitary uh, expenses related to cancer uh, diagnostic, screening, and treatment, making it uh, affordable to more uh, patients, even in third world uh, country. So as you all know, uh, nowadays, uh, cancer is diagnosed by detecting tumors that are uh, several millimeters or even centimeters uh, large, already formed by millions or billions of cancer cells. So how to uh, detect the disease that emerge uh, earlier stage? Well, one strategy is actually to use the latest advances of uh, molecular oncology. For each kind of cancer, oncologists have identified biomolecules known as cancer markers that are overexpressed by cancer cells and end up circulating uh, in the blood uh, flow. The concentration of these molecules is very low uh, making it uh, complicated and also expensive to detect uh, using, let's say, available uh, technologies. So in this context, having a compact and affordable device to screen a wide range of uh, cancer uh, markers would give an early warning uh, to doctors about uh, potential cellular uh, dysfunction, ringing alarm bells that would justify uh, more in-depth analysis, let's say, in the hospital. Developing such a device uh, is challenging. It's challenging because uh, this, is, this requires a true uh, multidisciplinary effort, combining the latest advances in physics, uh, engineering, and oncology. Actually, marrying different fields of science uh, is much easier said than, than done. Indeed, scientists, whatever the field of expertise, are so specialized, of course, in their skills, but also in their vocabulary and their way of reasoning, that uh, multidisciplinary uh, collaboration encounter uh, really communication uh, issues. Actually, my own experience as a physicist is that even within <coughs> physics, between physicists, physicists from different specialties, there is a true linguistic and conceptual uh, divide that makes like efficient interaction could be uh, inhibited. Back in uh, 2009, we decided to accept the challenge to put together a team of European uh, experts uh, in nanotechnology, in biotech and optics uh, engineering, and also in oncology. And the objective of the project initially was to develop a device that could detect several uh, cancer markers and to do it in a more accurate way uh, faster and at a lower cost than any other existing uh, technology. So quite uh, demanding requirements. One way to fulfill these requirements is actually to develop what is known as a lab on a chip. A lab on a chip is an integrated laboratory that includes on a small piece of chip of a few square centimeters one or several uh, functionality of a conventional uh, analytical lab. Putting together such an uh, integrated device requires merging three essential ingredients. The first one, well, the analytical machinery that would correspond to this machine on this sketch, the machine that I use to actually detect the presence of this cancer marker in the patient's uh, blood. Second ingredient, the lab space that hosts the machinery but also make sure that the machines are operated in a proper uh, way. And last but not least, one needs uh, to be able to manipulate the blood sample throughout the lab, for instance, to bring it from one machine to another. So somehow substituting 
the duty of these uh, operators in this case. So let me start with uh, the first ingredient, the analytical uh, machinery. So our technology uh, exploits the extraordinary optical properties of gold nanoparticles that set the basis of a field that is known nanoplasmonics. So this is my field, uh, my original field of expertise. We talk about very tiny objects from 10 to 100 nanometers, which would correspond to about 10,000 times smaller than the diameter of a strand of hair. So very tiny objects. A gold nanoparticle is like an antenna, very similar to a TV antenna, but operating at optical frequencies. It has the capability to interact very efficiently with light, despite the fact that it's a very tiny object. And this strong interaction actually occurs through a well-defined window of the light spectrum, giving the nanoparticle a very uh, well-defined and bright uh, color. Actually, for those of you who have ever wondered how stained glasses in cathedrals can remain so bright and colorful after centuries, this is precisely because these glasses, they contain resonant plasmonic nanoparticles. So very interesting uh, properties of this nanoparticle is that their resonant optical response, basically in other words, in simpler words, their color, is actually very sensitive to a small change of the environment. They are so sensitive that they can feel just a few molecules binding to their surface. And so the idea here is actually to exploit this effect to turn or nanoparticle into molecular sensors. So in practice, the nanoparticle is covered, is coated with the first molecule that is known uh, uh, as antibody. An antibody is a molecule that is capable of recognizing uh, the cancer marker one detect among a multitude of other molecules that would be present uh, in blood. When exposed uh, to the blood sample, the cancer marker binds specifically to the antibody this binding modifies the nanoparticle environment, therefore inducing a shift in the resonance, in other words, a small change of color of the nanoparticle. And by using a suitable optical readout, we can actually measure this small change of color. So we have uh, the sensor. What about the two other uh, ingredients? Lab space and operators. <coughs> Both of them actually provided by what is known as microfluidics. Over the last 10 years, uh, microfluidic has become a major technology to manipulate very tiny volumes of liquid through micro channels that are patterned in a polymer uh, matrix. In addition to enable to channel, to guide liquids through very complicated pathways, like in these pictures, microfluidics actually provide a complete toolbox of elementary uh, functionalities, mixers, uh, valves, uh, you name it, and all these uh, functionalities enable actually an accurate and automated preparation of the blood sample on the chip itself before delivering it to the sensing uh, region. So once you have combined uh, the gold nano sensors with its microfluidic environment, we uh, end up with uh, a disposable device that is able to perform more than 100 uh, measurements from a single drop uh, of blood. So how does it work? This uh, disposable chip is actually uh, inserted into a tabletop device that is connected to a computer that is here to operate the microfluidics and also uh, to perform the optical readout. So the idea is that basically you introduce a drop of blood into the device, the blood is driven toward the chip that would circulate through the channel and be uh, delivered to the different chambers containing the gold nanoparticle sensors. So by using the optical readout, we can quantify the small change of color and therefore retrieve what is the actual concentration of, uh, of the cancer marker. And very importantly, since we have many of these chambers on the same chip, we can repeat the operation and uh, at the end screen, many different molecules at a time. So eventually, what you get on the screen of the device 
is actually uh, the concentration of the different uh, screen molecules that provide the doctor with uh, direct assessment about the risk for the patient to actually develop uh, a cancer. So our platform has been uh, successfully tested so far on different cancer markers, including markers associated to liver and prostate uh, cancer. We're very excited because uh, it shows quite unique set of performance when uh, considering, for instance, sensitivity, the time and cost of each of the measurements, but also uh, the multiplexing character I was uh, just mentioning at the end of the video. So all that look uh, promising and uh, encouraging, but there's still a lot uh, to do. Uh, we are currently working together with an uh, oncologist to test and validate the platform in clinical studies, both for early diagnosis and, uh, and treatment uh, monitoring. On a more technical note, uh, we continue improving the performance of the platform and the idea is to try to make the reader smaller and cheaper, but also to increase the number of molecules we can detect uh, at a time. Ideally, all that without reducing the sensitivity of the device. Well, beyond this uh, scientific and technological uh, remaining challenges, we have already started putting quite some efforts into turning what was originally a concept, fruit of a research laboratory, into a real uh, systematic cancer screening uh, device. All that will require a huge external support from, of course, the medical doctors themselves, uh, to, the, to the industry, from the investors, to the regulation uh, agencies. At this stage of the adventure we initiated five years ago, uh, reaching our ultimate goal is actually somehow conditioned, at least in part, by all involved parts uh, basically opening up their minds like we did, well beyond the respective uh, field uh, of, of expertise. So I've been here today to share with you my personal experience as a physicist engaged in a multidisciplinary uh, enterprise. Um, what I want to say is that um, the success basically uh, of, uh, of this enterprise, like many other, many other challenges of our current society to actually improve uh, the wellness of a society, is actually uh, requires a more global vision of science and knowledge in general. And I think this is the reason why we uh, need, this is actually our duty, uh, to uh, educate and train the new generation to prepare them to live and think uh, across borders. Thank you.